stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum in the historic Max Factor building. Our guests today are architect Hoggy Belsberg and actress Lynn Stewart. Architect Hoggy Belsberg was born in Tel Aviv, graduated with a master's in architecture from Harvard University, and was honored by the American Institute of Architects, California Council, as an emerging talent and emerging he was. And within a few years, uh, he became a fellow at the AIA, was honored again, and he's um, with us today. He depended on and dis, I don't know, kind of dislocated the interiors of uh, a 12,000 foot space in Disney Hall. I don't know, what do we call it? You designed, I guess, right? We were, we were hired to, we were honored to be able to work in the Disney Concert Hall, uh, and we, where we had done uh, a couple of restaurants and uh, the Philharmonic store. Oh, you had done, oh, you did those, yes. I see. So, and it was the Frank Gehry designed building. Yes, yes. Um, how was that, working in someone else's architecture? Scary. Uh, it's it's uh, an iconic building, and it was an iconic building when we got the job. So it was um, very frightening to to be a uh, relatively young architect working under such a such a um, renowned uh, in a, under a renowned architect. But so. did you work with Frank at all? He was required to review our work I and see. to make sure that it was uh, okay with, and he would have to give blessing for us to design. Why would they bring someone in when he did all the architecture? Couldn't someone in his uh, office do that? Uh, absolutely. I think it was um, the Patina group originally brought us in to do Patina. That's when I first saw you and that is the most beautiful space when you, you. it's gorgeous. I was blown away the first time I walked in. Thank you. And it was like who did this? Who did this? Who carved these walls? <laughs> Thank Hoggy. <you. laughs> We had a lot of fun and we learned a great deal. Did so, you? Yeah. So he had to approve that? He did. He was, uh, he approved every, he had to approve every uh, uh, step of the way, yes. Well, tell us how you, you did the restaurant. That must have been your step, was that your foot in and then you did the, the store? It was, uh, it, that's exactly how it, it happened. We first received the award to do the, to the, the restaurant and then the LA Philharmonic awarded us with the store, uh, which was right next door. So we basically went from one part of the building to the next. Well, tell us about the inside of Patina, because that was so, or it is, so unique. Thank you. It's, uh, we decided to use uh, a CNC milling machine, a, robot a robotic uh, machine, to uh, carve these very articulate panels in the shape of a curtain. And it was really the uh, idea that the Disney Concert Hall doesn't have a curtain uh, for pre and post shows, so we brought the curtain into the into the restaurant. That is so great, um, and your work has been in a lot of exhibitions, several exhibitions. So tell us about material skills. Is that the name of one of them? Um, yes, that's the right. The future of future of intelligence. Yeah, we material. we were uh, <laughs> we were really honored to be a part of a, an exhibition in Canada that uh, spoke to the type of technology that we work with, which is um, converting three-dimensional and composed design, uh, virtual design and really realizing it in a in uh, surface form like such as wood, plastic, steel. Was that an outgrowth of the patina or did yes. that come first? Patina. No, that was an out. Patina came first and then we really became infatuated with this means of technology. So we've 
embraced it and continued. Can you use it on, as you said, you, you mentioned concrete, wood, uh -huh. can you mm -hmm. use it in those kind of materials? Absolutely, and today we can actually print those kind of uh, applications as well. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, it's a Are new you, world. <laughs> Is it green? Uh, it can be, sure. I mean, do you be. look, think about that? Absolutely. I mean, the uh, most of the work we do now is uh, has a very strong, sustainable approach to it. And and what does that mean? Because you got a Green Building Award. We did. For what was it? When LA? That was for, I believe, the uh, 20th Street offices. Uh, the LA mayor gave you that award. That's what he, he awarded us with that. That's correct. And, and what is a green? What is a green? building. <laughs> um, there are many ways to be a green building, sustainable or recycled or the systems that you use, but it's being, in my opinion, it's uh. being extremely conscious of uh, the environment in which we live right now and trying to build buildings with very, very low carbon footprint and um, a sensibility that we preserve our environment and not uh, reap it of its uh, of its resource more the environment than the than the use of materials are materials green uh, materials are definitely green or we should be using more green materials um, that goes from materials that are made with synthetic uh, uh, products that are not harmful to the environment mm -hmm. to uh, choosing other materials natural materials that do not again um, aren't able to be replenished quickly there was also a show that the Getty sponsored um, at MOCA called Sculpturalism, mm -hmm. and you had a, uh, some work in that. What you was were. that about? Um, the, the Getty sponsored a show at MOCA, exactly, which is uh, called A New Sculpturalism. And we were, our work was chosen, three pieces were chosen. Uh, the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust was one of the projects chosen, as well as another project we're doing in Beverly Hills for, um, for the Gores Group. Ah, uh, what is that? What kind of building is that? It's a headquarters building, a business building. And, and where is it located? On the uh, corner of Spalding and Wilshire Boulevard. And and is it unique? <laughs> I don't want to say think bizarre. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to use so. the it's, word. It's um, it tries to incorporate unique opportunities in in systematic uh, materials, meaning materials that can be. Uh, 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 generated on mass and do something a bit unique with them. So in this case, we uh, slumped glass a certain way, <gasps> oh, really? and we're turning the patterns different positions to create a quilted and uh, quilted pattern that that is uh, that should be quite interesting. When the it's exterior. Done. The exterior. How how uh, where will it front? Wilshire. Uh, Wilshire and Spalding. Uh, it, it fronts. Oh, Both, that'll yeah. be fantastic. So the maquette was in the Mocha show of yeah, that. Yes, exactly. And what, how do you, what'd you say, move glass? <laughs> well, we would... Um, what, move mountains? <laughs> it's like move move mountains. the rock at LACMA? <laughs> how do you do that? Well, what we did was we, um, it's, it's a series of panels, one of which was on display at Mocha, and we basically turn it different ways so it creates a different pattern. But we really oh. only have three different types of pattern, t types of uh, modules. You don't move it. It's no, we not don't. No, we we place it. I see. And set it so it creates a real beautiful mosaic. Mosaic. So, did you use that type of work at the uh, L.A. Museum of the Holocaust? No. M O. <laughs> there we tried something different. We actually tried to manipulate concrete uh, using shotcrete and um, create a very fluid kind of surface environment for a concrete. So it was a little bit different. In one respect, we're using a module. In another one, we're actually trying to uh, manipulate a surface, uh, but a greater surface, not just a unit. The, the one thing about the Museum of the Holocaust is it looks like it goes down. Does it go down? It does. It is actually quite a bit submerged under the uh, underground. So does this depict underground going down? Yes, it's the entry, which we did was we created a very, very long ramp that would subtly take you down from, from street level to the underground, but slowly submerging you underground. 
and then you can stand on top. Yes. And, and that's grass. That what is, is grass. that? It's a, it's a whole micro environment that we created on the roof. It's about six or seven different native species that live and die and grow together. Oh. So very, very low maintenance. And it's a, night, it's a place where people can go and reflect and before or after their, their experience in the museum. And where exactly is it? It's a Pan Pacific Park right across the street from the Grove. You know, you can't see it from yeah. uh, Beverly Boulevard. Is yeah. it Beverly? Yeah, it's a good thing. That's what we try to do. We try to maintain ah. open park space. And we wanted to have the building basically unveil itself to the public within the park. We didn't want to to be uh, this iconic element outside of the park. Yeah, it's not in your face. You right. kind of have to look for it, and then when you get in it, you're submerged. That's the whole idea. Good. How did you, <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job. Um, did you design any of the interiors, too? We did. We did. We did all of the exhibits as well. We worked very closely with Randy uh, Schoenberg, Randy too. Schoenberg is the director yes. and uh, one of the benefactors. Yes. And I think this screen, this LED screen, did you design this? We did. It's fantastic. Sure. Thank you. Tell Thank us you. a little bit about it. Well, after we finished the museum, one of the things that Randy Schoenberg wanted us to get involved with was this uh, element called the the Shoah Wall, and um, or the Tree of Testimony, and it's um, really a composition of about 85 screens of various sizes that depict interviews from the Shoah Foundation of different witnesses, and it curves and bends very, very slow, very, very gently around the viewer. So you're really immersed in a in a in an arena of talking heads. So even though you're listening to one person, oh, yes. there are many voices and many people around you. So we create this virtual community of witnesses. You're wearing earphones. We are. So it's you a, can't hear the other people. That's right. And it's a very high-tech solution. But to, you're involved, just like you right. say. I, that's right. I see. Um, and the Shaw Foundation is Spielberg's foundation from USC, that's right? That's correct. That's and, correct. Um, I, I love the idea of the wall. They're all different size screens, which yes. are all different size people, right? Exactly, exactly. From every, for, and many different languages and from many parts of the world. And Randy Schoenberg said that you could sit there for a year. At least without repeating Repe the same repeating. Uh, testimony, witness. Yeah, that's correct. It's great. Thank you. So congratulations because it was a wonderful experience. And oh, the other thing that's so great inside is that that um, area that the man made from Santa Barbara. He he carved oh, out those. Beautiful. Tell us, yes. like, the, just tell the me model, you're speaking yes. of the model, the uh -huh. Soberberg model. Right. Uh, what we try to do is the gentleman who built the model actually survived the camp, but he is filmed above speaking directly to the, to the model below. So a, a viewer gets to really feel like he's taking them through a tour and of the camp. And he's pointing at the camp and right. he remembered every part of the camp Everything. by memory, That's right? That's right. It's extraordinary, man. Well, the Holocaust Museum of L.A. or the L.A. Museum, Museum of, the of the Holocaust, is it? That's correct. The L.A. Museum of the Holocaust. Yes. And it's a wonderful building. Before we leave, I know you teach at SciArc and USC and UCLA. What do you teach? What do you teach those kids? Um, through the years, I've been, uh, I had taught there, and it was, it's a studio course. Oh. And it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity uh, when you're working to really get back into school and be able to inter interact with the students again. Do they have, do you have them make your models? No, <laughs> <laughs> only, only, uh, no, we don't. <laughs> thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thanks for watching. We'll be right back with actress Lynn Stewart. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're here as the guest of Donnell Dadigan at the Hollywood Museum on Highland Avenue. And I'm with actress Lynn Stewart, who was born and raised in Beverly Hills <laughs> and majored in theater arts at L.A. City College. You've seen her on lots of uh, TV shows. You've seen her on film. She was in American Graffiti and... Um, 
Jumpin' Jack Flash. Right, with Whoopi. Yes. yes. And also, what was the, Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids, yes. yes. So you've been on uh, these TV shows with Tracy Ullman. Right, right. I've been on both <laughs> her I, shows. Right, yes, yes. And with Shirley and Laverne, Laverne and right. Shirley. Right, I did like eight episodes. Cindy's my best friend, so I had an in. And, oh, and that. So oh. every year that they would dress me up in a different wig and, and I'd go and do an episode. But it was a blast. <laughs> and MASH. And MASH, yes. I played Radar's girlfriend. Okay. And let's talk about the Broadway stage. Oh, oh my God. It was amazing. So you were in the Pee Wee Herman show? Right, right, um, right. Well, right. so did you go um, right from here? To Broadway? Was the show here? The show was here at the Nokia, or Nokia. I Nokia. Heard it. <laughs> Both Whatever, ways. right. And then uh, at the, this is in 2010, and then at the end of the year, we went to Broadway for three months. Can you imagine? I, I know. It was just. But you were in the business for years. You've worked with the top di di directors. You've honed your skills at the Groundlings. Um, you've had recurring roles on it's sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> right, right. I'm still doing that. That's it's it's so much fun. So and there you were on Broadway. Right, right. And I was I, I wasn't one of those actresses that said, you know, someday Broadway. But you when you're did. there <laughs> but when you're there, it's like, oh my gosh, this is this is uh, amazing. I mean, uh because you, you go up side and there's like Times Square <laughs> and it was so, it was snowing so bad that was the only thing we were in three blizzards but we we had uh, should I where should I talk should I talk to talk the camera to him. oh okay I'll talk to you <laughs> <laughs> well um, it was it was absolutely thrilling to be a part of uh, the Pee Wee Herman show on Broadway and um, I have a friend who played Mailman Mike in the show, John Moody, and he said it was like carny people coming to Broadway. Oh, because <laughs> well, it's kind of true in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Because you probably never expected to go to Broadway with that no, show. No, and we had... Off-Broadway, maybe. Uh, but we had a built-in audience because everybody... Uh, who They knew what they were going to see. They were going to yes, see the Yes, because it was from TV, TV right? Right, right. So... The, the audience was just, was there for you. I mean, I'd open a door as Miss Yvonne and say, hi, boys and girls, and the audience went, <gasps> I mean, I wouldn't have to do anything, and there was already a love affair between me and the audience because they grew up with me. I was who they watched when they were children. That's exactly right. So you had all ages in your right, audience. Right, right, right. And there was a, a, a man who was like 40, and he came up to me, and he was so excited to see see me and he said my mom and I used to watch you all the time and I said well where's your mom and and he said she's in the bathroom right now and I said oh. I'm gonna wait until she comes out and then she came out and just went nuts because she met Miss Yvonne and it was the women my age group who were in their 60s who were the screaming the loudest were they and were the, the nuttiest fans of all because they had had the fun of watching it with their kids so uh, it was it was a thrill. That I, is a thrill, and a thrill, Broadway coming from L.A. City College, which had a great theater department. Right? Yes, they did. We I never worked harder. I mean, uh, that's where I met Cindy Williams, oh, and you we did were in see theater it, arts right? department together. And Bruce Kimmel, who's also done uh, Broadway, it's a musical comedy. Uh, does like it genius continue? in his own right? Does he was it, there too. Does it continue with that? Uh, uh, quality of people? I've gone back and uh, it's really, really great. I mean, the shows have been great, yes. And they oh. also now have a film department where they didn't have when I was there. And they have a great art department. Yes, they do. They do. So here you are. Um, you're born and raised in Beverly Hills. I wasn't. I, I was misleading on my, on my uh, resume. Um, I was born in uh, Bell, California, and then we went to Norwalk. But when I was in, like, the <laughs> third grade, then we moved to Beverly Hills. And then I was there through uh, but were, were you grammar around school and high school. around show business? Were you around actresses? Yes, <laughs> I was. So, so, you know, if you come from the Midwest, I hear a lot of friends from the Midwest. They said their dad wanted them to stay in town and take over the business. And what's the show business? Yeah. But, I, I mean, I went to school with 
with uh, people who who like um, uh, Dean Martin's daughters, oh, right. Gail and Dina, and Richard Dreyfus was my neighbor, and I and I grew up with him. And um, directors and directors writers, and Rob probably. Reiner was like one um, ahead of me. So it, and oh oh and Albert Brooks who was Al Einstein when oh, I went right. to school with Cliff him. He was in my class too. Cliff Einstein's brother. Cliff Einstein yeah. is a wonderful art collector in L.A. Wow, he's very supportive wow. of the arts. Yeah, Cliff. But but we all we all went to school together and we had this little group. That it, Rose Jane Landau was our uh, improv teacher, and Rob was there, and uh, Ricky was, he was, well, Richard Dreyfus, but he was Ricky Dreyfus was back it, then. Was it uh, Beverly High? Beverly Hills High School, and right by the Beverly Hills High School was Roxbury Park, and that's where we had our little <laughs> improv group. Did you? So I grew up not being afraid of improvisational comedy, and I can understand why some actors are like, oh, I can't do this, but I grew up with it, so it's, it's not scary to and me. And then you went to the Groundlings. And then I, mean, I went that to the was part of the groundlings. I, I went to training. the groundlings, and I, I just had a blast, and, and go back there all the time to do special shows and stuff. Was there a turning point from high school to um, getting into show business? Well, I went to high school, and then I went to LA City College for two and a half right. years, and then Cindy, she start, she was a little ahead of me uh, as far as meeting people and working, yeah. and so. Uh, she pulled me in on a, a TV commercial for Ice Blue Secret, and we both got it. And so that's how I got my SAG card. So that was a that turning was point. Beginning. That was a turning point. Wow. Right. And then the groundlings, you were acting with all these kind of, same kind of people. Oh, yes. I, I had a, a wonderful time. And be, before that, I had taken uh, improvisational comedy before that. Oh, you yeah. had done that. So Harvey Lembeck's comedy workshop, where like John Ritter was there and Robin Williams. So I got exposed to comic geniuses very early on. Did you do stand-up? I never did stand-up stand-up, but I would do characters doing stand-up. Oh, you would? Yes. <laughs> Why do you think that? It's because you're an actress? I, it was just more fun for me to do a, a, a character doing a stand-up. You know, you worked in these films, these iconic films with uh, Paul Glazer and Penny Marshall and George Lucas and, uh, Ro oh, my friend Robert Ginty, who's passed oh. on. Re you worked with him at one time. How, what were you learning from, these were pretty serious directors. Right. Well, when I did... Um, I, I did American Graffiti. I knew in my heart that it was going to be, a, like you said, an iconic film. And right. I, I just had one scene in it, just a small part in it. But I was so excited to be in that movie. And my manager at Pat, Pat McQueenie said, you know, you can go to, they're not going to pay for you to go up to up north, but you can go and be hired as a San Francisco actress. So that's what I did. Oh. I was hired, I had a friend who had an apartment and I stayed there for two weeks and I was hired out as a San Francisco but actress. But that's fabulous because you have to take charge yes. of your career, right? Yeah, and, and, and I went around telling everybody, this is going to be a mega hit, this is going to change the history of films. Nobody would believe, oh, get out of here. And I did the same thing on Bridesmaid. I had oh, a, a part is, in Bridesmaid. But the, I, how many years difference between oh, those? 30? At least 30. Yeah. And I went around telling everybody this is going to change history. This is going to be a mega hit. And I said, I know I was in American Graffiti. I had that same <laughs> sense. And they were all, oh, sure. sure. And it was. And, and so I was or thrilled to be in two pictures that changed the course of, of movies. Okay. And Philadelphia, that's also oh, yeah. a big hit. Yes, and and the guys are so great to work with, and and I'm so glad that I had an improv background because oh, they just go off, oh, you know. They do. And, and then you you have to remember, I have a plot point here. How can I get it in in the middle of their improv riff? But it's, I it's do. Not, it's scripted. <laughs> it's it's scripted, but they do it like follow the script once and then they they add things all the time but i grew up improvising like i said so i can i can take them on i can handle what? their improvising what is your character my character is named bonnie and i'm charlie's mother 
and she has gone through many changes. Uh, she has OCD the last time. And then for the Christmas show, she took like uh, store Santas upstairs with elves. So she was a bit of a prostitute at one time. So she's constantly evolving. In the original show, she was a very naive Catholic um, Irish woman who who and so she's 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 quite different. But you have times. to learn all these backgrounds of these of of what her character does, right? To well, well, you kind of do, but I I kept asking the guys, where's her husband? What happened? And they will we'll find out later. I mean, they didn't have an answer. For oh, me so you had to just. But now it could have been Danny DeVito. Charlie could be Danny DeVito oh. and my love child. Oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you were working, uh, that's, that's uh, Charlie's mom, right? Right. Okay. So when you were working with Tracy Ullman, what did you learn from her? She had kind of the same background as you in a way, right? Oh, yes. I mean, in, in England, she did, you know, impro improvising yes. and singing, and, and she just did everything. Um, she was so much fun to work with and so giving. <laughs> And I got to loop her last season, oh. you know, and, and do all the voices of the, of the background actors. And, and then she, I, I don't know what happened. I think she decided that that was enough. But I was like, oh, because I was having so much fun. <laughs> and she's incredible, incredibly giving and, and supportive. And, and she, I did a, a special where she played her makeup lady character. And uh, it was, um, and... So she would do her character, and then in the middle of it, she would say, like, hey, would I like a spot of tea? And he'd be going, like, why is she talking like that? I'm like, oh, that's how she talks. <laughs> that's her real talk. <laughs> <You know? laughs> would you ever mimic her? <laughs> I, I, no. no. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mimic her, but, but it's fun to, to mimic her. But, you know, she can mimic anybody. Right. And I would imitate her if, if, you know, if she was here. Working with Pee Wee Herman, um... That was his character. Have you ever worked with him? Uh, uh, anything else other than the show? Yes, we did a play together. Oh, it, you at, did at the Groundlings, and then it went on, and we've done <sighs> it at the Gay and Lesbian Center, and we di we did it at the Be uh, the um, the Beverly Theater, and we we've done it, and we did it in San Francisco. Oh. It was called Beverly Winwood Presents the Actor Showcase. And who wrote it? And, well, what it was is we took scenes uh, from classic plays and most of them were had been made into movies and Paul and I did um, we, we did a scene from Butterflies Are Free um. where I played the uh, Goldie Hawn part but I played her like a Las Vegas ni uh, nightclub <laughs> entertainer in her late 70s like blind what do you mean you're blind you know and all the the lines just fit and so it was, it was great, <laughs> you know, and, and he played this, this very young, uh, you know, not so good, naive actor. Paul Rubens yes, is yes. the real name of Pee Wee Herman, yes, right? Yes, right. And, and so we, we had a blast doing that. And we, we, we got to, to work with um, Jennifer uh, Coolidge, um. uh, uh, Melissa McCarthy. I mean, we got to work with just wonderful, wonderful uh, so, talent in this show. So that relationship lasted a long time, oh, or yes. it's still lasting, we're still, I guess. We're still friends. We check in. We don't see each other all the time, but we check in with each other on, on the telephone quite often. Well, I'm so glad you came today. And before we leave, tell me really quickly what Comedy Bang Bang is. Oh, Comedy Bang Bang? <laughs> it, it used to be... A, uh, it used to be on the internet, and now it's it's uh, it's it's on a cable. So so it's uh, it's it's going you know gangbusters. And there you are, <laughs> bang bang. Okay, Lynn, Lynn Marie. Yes, whatever. <laughs> Thank you for being Thank with us. Thank you. What a treat. <laughs> and thanks for watching the Joan Quinn profiles. Email at j a q u i n n one at aol dot com. See you next time.